Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. Jennifer's Law is now being considered at the state capitol. It's named after Jennifer Farber Dulos, who police say was killed by her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, in 2019, as well as another Jennifer, Jennifer Magnano, who was killed in 2007 by her husband in front of her children. The law would expand the definition of domestic violence to include coercive control, which covers a number of behaviors like psychological and financial abuse. So joining us to talk about the bill this morning is Senator Alex Kasser, who introduced the legislation and is leading the charge in getting it passed in the Senate, as well as State Representative Robin Porter, who is a sponsor in the House of the bill and testified in support of the bill during a hearing last week. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so Senator Kasser, let's start with you. Why did you feel like this bill was necessary and needed in Connecticut? Because after uh, Jennifer Farber Dulos disappeared, I started hearing from dozens of survivors that their story was just like hers. Their experience was just like hers. And yes, they were alive, but uh, they were experiencing the same sort of um, dismissal and non-recognition of their situation, and they were desperate for help. So I worked with international and national experts, uh, in, including Evan Stark, who defined coercive control, to come up with legislation that would actually help courts identify real claims of abuse so that they could come up with uh, decisions that were in everybody's best interest. Representative Porter, you testified uh, about this bill during that hearing with a very personal account. You are a survivor of domestic abuse. Uh, would this bill, do you think, have helped you in your circumstance? Uh, absolutely. I think it's important to recognize that when we talk about domestic violence, it's not just the physical abuse. It is also mental, spiritual, emotional, and I believe that those scars far exceed and last any physical abuse that you can receive, um, especially if you're fortunate enough to live um, and survive the abuse. So, I, I and that's why I made the comments that I made, and that's why I shared my story, because I think that people with lived experience, uh, the folks closest to the problem, really do have uh, real solutions. Well, you are so strong for speaking out, and it's so important for people to hear, even people who are in your position going through it, because we know that uh, domestic abuse, it does not matter, you know, where where you are, who you come from, it can impact women from, from everywhere, and whether you're a, you know, an elected official or not. Um, so tell me, you, you all were able to get Evan Rachel Wood to testify. Now, she used to date Marilyn Manson, the singer, and um, she testified here in Connecticut. Now, we know she had testified in California for one of the laws there. How did that come about? Well, it came about because uh, Evan Rachel Wood is a brave advocate for changing the system that failed her and failed so many other victims of domestic abuse. And she started an organization, the Phoenix Act, and they're working to help legislation good legislation pass around the country. So they reached out to me last year. Uh, her team came and visited me from California to support this bill. And when I reintroduced it this year, she showed up to testify in person, which was incredibly powerful. And I'm so grateful. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, you know, got national attention with that too, which is good. What other states have passed similar legislation? Is Connecticut paving the way on this? Or uh, are we looking at other states across the nation that are similar? Well, there's an effort underway in many states, but uh, in the fall of 2020, Hawaii passed course of control legislation and California did too. But this legislation in Connecticut would really be groundbreaking. Um, we heard yesterday testimony from David Mandel, who runs the Safer Together Institute, who is a world recognized leader in how to ensure children's safety in custody battles, because unfortunately, custody battles are where domestic abuse often plays out. Because after a woman has the finds the courage to leave her abuser, she then has to go to court and battle for her right and her children's right to be free and safe. Um, so this this is groundbreaking legislation. You know, the Jennifer Farber Dulos case is really heartbreaking when you kind of see what she went through um, because 
What's interesting is the amount of court and how long the divorce proceedings lasted. And she, from you know, from my research and reading it, had some of the means to be able to battle that back in a lot of ways, but a lot of women don't. And so you all have financial abuse in a, as part of the coercive control. So, you know, how would you how would this law have teeth in that way, Representative Porter? Can you repeat that again? You, I lost you in the oh, sorry. In Christina. So financial abuse, right? We we have psychological abuse. Financial abuse is included in the coercive control, which when people initially think of domestic violence, they might not initially think of uh, someone you know, being buried in court and having to use um, their lawyer all the time, people who can't afford to, to follow through on that. So how does this law have teeth to be able to help someone in that position? I think the first way it helps them is in recognizing that coercive control plays a key factor in all of this. And it brings it back to the point where it's applied in family court issues all the way through and including custody, as uh, Senator Casper stated, uh, a lot of this erupts and gets bigger because it's um, about control. And when you lose control of the woman and then the children come into play, it, it, it really does escalate. And financially, you're controlled because you don't have the means to pay for the attorneys to keep going to court as they drag this out year after year. And, and, and a lot of women will succumb to that and actually put themselves back in harm's way because they really feel they have no way out of it. And I think that's why this coercive control um, bill that Senator Cass has come forward with is really powerful because it empowers women. Uh, a lot of women are not leaving because they are afraid that the, the services aren't there, uh, the supports that they need are not in place. Um, and, and to be quite frank, it, you're ashamed. You don't even want anyone to know what's going on and what you're being subjected to. So to have something that validates, truly validates what you're going through, like this coercive control definition, I think it really gives women the liberty and space to, to think that, you know, maybe I can get out of this alive. Maybe, you know, they will hear my case. So financially, I think, you know, we have to think about how that limits people and keeps people under control when they're really trying to be free and trying to stay alive. Because this is a life and death matter. And every time I think about the fact that I made it out, um, it's bittersweet because I know people and I have friends that didn't make it out. Yeah, I mean, look, covering the news, we have cases, I mean, weekly. I feel like where we're hearing about this kind of stuff. We just had a young woman uh, lose her life in New Haven in front of her one-year-old child. Uh, yes. which is awful and yes. just senseless. Yes. Uh, Senator Kasser, what's, what's the reception you're getting? What's the pushback? Have you gotten pushback on this bill? There's always pushback. Anytime you have uh, a really good idea and a big idea um, that would change the system, there's always pushback. But you know what we have, um, what we do have on our side is the lived experience of survivors who all spoke out yesterday in a really powerful collective way about um, their experiences, which are all so, so similar. And, uh, and they, they know what we need to do to correct the system and to make sure that their stories are heard, that their experiences are validated, and that most of all, that the courts provide the protection that every person deserves. Because the goal is simply to ensure that every person has the right to be free and be safe. Amen. Senator Amen. Kasser, thank you very much. Representative thank Porter, thank you both for coming on and speaking about this bill. We will be watching it closely. Thanks You're very so welcome, much. Christina. And before we go, just really quick, I want to, because you did bring up the domestic violence um, homicides that have occurred in yes. Hamden and, and New Haven uh, recently, uh, there will be on this Monday, March the 29th at 3 p.m. on the New Haven Green, a community response, a call to action to end domestic violence homicide. And this is being organized by BH Care Hope Family Justice Center and New Haven Family Violence Community Advisory Board. So I hope that those that will support and actually be able to make it out, we will socially distance and be safe. But uh, we need to stand up right now because domestic violence has really reached an all time high with this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we wanna make sure that we continue to amplify uh, what's going on and let people know that they matter and we care. 
All right. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that does it for us on The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.